theory. So, uh, what is kinetic particle theory? Basically, it's a it's a Greek philosophy. It started from there. Um, when you look at the universe, you find two things. One of them is matter. And the other one is energy. So basically, when you when you look at things from a chemical point of view, around you, uh, you've got uh, you've got all this universe around you, and uh, it's divided into two parts. One is matter, and the other one is energy. So how do you how do you define matter, and what what is energy? Matter is something that has, uh, I mean, it has different properties. It has a mass, and it occupies a certain dimension. It has uh, it has it occupies space. So there's, it's going to occupy, it's going to have a length, it's going to have a volume, it's going to have, so these are certain properties. So matter is something, matter is something that is, a, that is, that is something that you could actually, you can measure the mass, you can measure uh, the volume that it occupies. Meanwhile, you have energy as well. You've got energy that's being transmitted from the, from the sun to the earth. Now, energy has no mass. So when you see light traveling, there is no mass that's traveling. It doesn't have any mass. Uh, it doesn't even occupy any space. No space occupies it. So, so doesn't occupy space. Instead, what it does is it moves from one uh, from one specific thing to another specific thing. It's it travels from one matter to another matter. Uh, for example, there's a there's a hot cup of tea. The energy from the hot cup of tea would travel to the air. So it's going to it's going to move from one medium to another medium. So if you have a sun, the energy from the sun is going to move towards the uh, and it will become the energy of the earth. So it moves from one. medium to another medium. And and it travels and how does it move in the form of waves? Now, anyways, we're not going to discuss energy. That is something that uh, would be dealt in physics. In chemistry, we're not going to talk about this specific thing. We're going to talk a lot about matter. How does matter behave? That's something that's uh, that what we are going to deal with. Now, uh, Greeks figured out that if you keep on dividing matter, every matter would eventually turn into small particles. You break something up, it turns into smaller and smaller particles. And eventually there would come a point where the particles will not will not divide any further. Uh, so that is how matter was pictured. It was pictured in the form of particles. Uh, and it was a pretty revolutionary idea at the time because, because imagine you've got air in uh, air around you. And if you look at the air, you don't see anything. So it was pretty revolutionary at the at that time that people thought that air was made up of tiny, tiny particles. So the question was, does anyone know how did they figure out that air was made up of tiny particles? Because if you look at air, if you look at water, you don't see particles. You, you just see one. I mean, you, don't, you either don't see anything or. Uh, so does anyone know how did they figure out that air is made up of particles? Anyone? Shwe, Burwa, Abdurrahman, Amna, any idea? No idea, sir. Okay, so, so basically, if it's made up of, so what they thought was, what the Greeks thought was that uh, all the matter around you is like these tiny billet balls. Okay, so if you, if you have a pool table, I mean, that's what they thought. So what happens when you have, uh, when you have tiny ball-like particles uh, all around you? Uh, they're going to bump into each other and they're going to move around and they're going to move around. I mean, this particle moving around, it will hit, collide with this one. 
these other particles they will get knocked out just like billet balls moving around and how would you describe the motion of these particles it would be random it would be haphazard so that is one evidence if the particles are moving haphazardly so what they did was or what they actually figured out was they figured out brownian motion well they they couldn't see the air they couldn't see these particles so what they figured out was that if you look at dust particles now you can see the dust particles so let's let's assume you've got this big big dust particle and let's say this is the dust particle and it's, it's bigger in size and you can't see the air particles now naturally dust should settle down at the bottom i mean this is how okay let's remove this so let's assume these are dust particles so what should happen is that the dust particles should like if there is dust in the air it should just move down and it should settle at the bottom surface similarly this the same thing should apply to this one and the particles should come down and settle down at the bottom but instead what they saw was that if you look at dust if you look at wind if you look at sunlight in the window and you see dust particles floating around you'll notice that the dust particles are haphazardly random randomly moving around and why are they moving around randomly because there are invisible air particles which you can't see and they're acting as these tiny just like just like that billiard pool table so these invisible air particles are randomly colliding with the dust particles sometimes the dust particle is going upward sometimes it's moving downwards so the movement is haphazard so so that is one evidence where you couldn't actually see the air particles but you can guess that the air particles are behaving like those tiny balls on a billiard pool table or a snooker pool table so brownian motion if somebody is going to ask you what is brownian motion brownian motion is the haphazard movement of dust particles or any particles like you, even if you drop drop ink into water the water particles you can't see the water particles but the ink haphazardly is moving around why is it haphazardly moving around because the invisible water particles are basically bumping into each other in random manner which is why the ink particles are distributing in a very random way so it's the haphazard movement of dust particles due to random collisions with air particles so with invisible so remember you're going to get questions like this uh, they're going to ask you why are the dust particles randomly moving around because uh, because the air particles are in constant random motion uh, according to kinetic particle theory which is why uh, there's random collisions happening and the dust particles are sometimes going upwards sometimes going sideways sometimes going downwards so that is what brownian motion that is an evidence of kinetic particle theory so evidence of kinetic particle so it's really you saw that clear yes sir so moving on that's the first thing so we're going to imagine matter as these billet balls as those snooker balls on a snooker table that's that's how matter is going to be discussed from now on so quickly solids liquids and gases the three states of matter so we're going to start with solids and we've got uh, liquids and uh, we've got gases that's the third state so we've got solids liquids and gases so one by one can somebody describe what a solid looks like according to the kinetic particle theory
Yeah, is it? How do you describe its uh, its arrangement? Uh, sir, what was the question? What is the arrangement of solids? Uh, they are tightly packed. Okay, so, so this is this is how a solid what would look like tightly packed with no gaps in between. Yeah. Okay, or uh, plus you'll be asked to draw this as well. So yoga. As a first one, uh, let me write this down. Uh, regular. Actually, remember first thing. The word that should be used is regular arrangement. How is kebab? You can. I mean, you're allowed to use tightly packed. Okay, but okay, I'm not going to use tightly packed right now because the arrangement is not tightly packed. That's not the proper way of describing. जब वो gaps का पूछे करें, if he if he asks you for gaps, like are there any gaps between them, then you're going to write it's tightly packed. ठीक है, just second ये कहाँ चला गया? So this one is a regular arrangement. Uh, that's the first one. I said, what about liquids? How would how would liquids be different? Uh, sir, the particles are slightly away from each other. Looking again, I'm. I said, remember, you have to you have to listen to the question carefully. Okay, that's what CA would expect to you as well. Arrangement is. I'm not talking about the gaps. I'm talking about the arrangement. Okay, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna write tightly packed over here, but that's not the arrangement. Uh, just a second. Uh, tightly packed. Sorry. As I'm coming back to this, uh, liquids, and let me just copy this quickly. As the arrangement would be called an irregular arrangement. Okay, so if they if they ask you for the arrangement, it's going to be irregular, and there's going to be. Uh, so, slightly irregular. Okay, that kind of is sufficient. So it's an irregular arrangement, and if they ask you, do they have any gaps? Uh, then you're going to write that it's loosely packed, or they have some gaps between them. And the third one, the third one is gases. So. Uh, So, what is the arrangement of gases? Regular or irregular? Irregular. Okay, that's that's irregular as well. And in this case, uh, it's not going to be loosely packed. There's going to be large gaps between between them. So, this one is going to be. So this one is going to be regular arrangement, and uh, and it's going to be a uh, uh, large. There's going to be very large gaps, or or what you can write is that the particles are far away. So particles are far away. So what about what are the properties? Uh, what about intermolecular forces or the strength of attraction between particles? Who has the strongest attraction? Solids. Okay, so so the solids are going to have the strongest attraction. And the gases over here are going to have the. I mean, they're going to have the weakest weakest attraction. Or you can say very weak attraction, or negligible attraction. So negligible attraction, and there's going to be a spectrum. Liquids are going to come in between. Now, uh, what 
what are the things? What about movement? Uh, how do you describe the movement of a solid? Yeah, what's the what's the movement of a solid? The particles vibrate and rotate slightly. Yes, yeah, so they vibrate uh, to and fro about a fixed position. What what about liquids? How do they how do they move? Liquids are here. How would you describe it? Let's say it's your exam. How would you and just hold on one second? so now now liquids now in liquids uh remember particles are just sliding around they're not they're not moving to and fro i mean they can move around but the particles are kind of sliding past each other so particles are randomly i mean the word random is important So particles randomly slide past each other. So that's what a liquid is. Uh, remember, they can't move freely. Uh, you don't see water particles jumping from the glass and uh, coming out of it. Uh, they stay together, but they can sort of slip and slide. And in gases, what happens is that the particles are completely randomly and freely moving around. So for gases, the particles move randomly and freely in all directions. And then um, who's got more energy, who's got less energy? Solids have the least energy, they're not energetic. They're not e even able to move around. They just vibrate, so least energy. And uh, gases, on the other hand, uh, they're, most, they're the most energetic, which is why they're freely randomly moving. So they're the most energetic. They're freely randomly moving around in all directions and again it's a spectrum it's uh liquids are somewhere in between um and the last thing we're going to talk about is uh fixed shape so the last thing we're going to talk about is uh who's got a fixed shape who's got a fixed volume solid so the solids have uh, a fixed shape and a fixed volume What about liquids? Shape and volume, is it fixed or not? Can I tell anyone? Amna, Urva, Adhuriman. Liquids, do they have a fixed shape? They don't have a fixed shape, but they have a fixed volume. Okay, so no, so there's a glass of water, but it would look like a glass of water. If you put the same water into a bottle, it would look like a, I mean, the water will take the shape of the container. So no fixed shape. But you're going to have a fixed volume. The volume remains exactly it remains exactly the same. And the last one, gases, they don't have, they don't have a fixed shape or volume. 
gases are compressible uh, and they usually, I mean, whatever the container is, that's the volume, that's the shape. So gases tend to be uh, not having shape. Now about kinetic particle theory, you're pretty, you're pretty, uh, you're pretty familiar with all these three things. Um, some extra things, remember that temperature, uh, what does temperature represent? When you talk about temperature, temperature represents the kinetic energy of the particles. Or you can say it represents the volume or, or the velocity or the speed of the particles. So when you say something has a higher temperature, it's got uh, the particles are more energetic. Uh, if you've got a therm meter and you put it in boiling water, what basically goes on is that, uh, so let's say this is, this is a therm meter. So if you put it in hot water, what basically goes on is that the water particles, let's say they are these tiny water particles. These water particles are very energetic. These water particles are going to travel and they're going to travel very quickly and they would have a very high speed and they're going to bump with the thermometer particles. If there's mercury in it, energy will be transmitted to those uh, mercury particles and that mercury would start to, it would start to rise. So basically what, what temperature measures is the kinetic energy of the particles or how, how fast are the particles moving around. Secondly, uh, so this is one thing that should be remembered. Then you've got another thing, which is uh, pressure. And we're going to talk about pressure for gases. Does anyone know what, what is the formula of pressure? Or can anyone explain what pressure is? Like if I say that there's a gas at very high pressure, what does that really mean? In terms of kinetic particle theory, anyone? Urva, Amna, Abdurrahman. So I'm drawing this container. And there are these tiny gas particles. Let's call that steam. So there's vapor of steam that's present at high, at very high temperature. Can somebody explain using kinetic particle theory what is pressure? Would be Amna any idea what pressure is? Um, sir, I think it's just the particles colliding with the walls of the container, and they're exerting a force on the walls of the container. So these particles, they're traveling very fast and they would be exerting a force on the walls of the container during that collision. And that is what pressure is. So when you see something at very high pressure, that means uh, the particles are hitting the walls of the container and, uh, and that's what's going to push the piston upwards. So remember, how do you define pressure? It's uh, exactly the way you described it. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's particles of gas. Do you have pressure for liquids and uh, solids? Or let's put it, can a solid exert a pressure? Solids will exert pressure. Anyone, just a, just a random guess. Shweb, Abdul Rahman. Solids can exert pressure, but only downward. See, and that's because of the weight, because in solids, the particles are not randomly moving around. So if I put a solid over here, 
the particles would not fly around and push the piston upwards. So it obviously can't do that upwards. Uh, it's just because of the weight that uh, the force is exerted downwards, that's it. So pressure, uniform pressure only exists in gases. Particles of gas randomly colliding with the walls of the container exert a force. And uh, so what's going to happen if I, uh, if I, what will happen is, uh, okay, let's leave it here. I mean, you'll, you'll get a few questions on how pressure is exerted. Uh, you'll get particle theory questions related to, for example, if you increase temperature, what happens? Uh, if you increase temperature, the particles would become more energetic. If they become more energetic, uh, they're going to exert a greater force. And which is why there's going to be a greater pressure inside the container, which is why things that are very hot, they blow up. Uh, because the particles, they start moving around so vigorously that they exert a much bigger and bigger force as the kinetic, kinetic energy of the particles, they continue to increase. So that's, that's about it for this class. I'm going to try and go through the first, uh, let me just give you a quick reminder. I'll even send you just video lectures on this. Uh, this is mostly basic stuff, but again, Remember the focus is on these topics. These are the ones that we're going to focus on. Uh, I'll just spend a couple of weeks on the first two, that's it. And then we'll basically be focusing on these bigger topics. These ones are again easy. And then it's the last one. That's the one that's difficult. So Tika, we'll continue uh, same time, uh, but on Monday then. Tika. Or if there's any question, then you can ask me Tika about uh, I'll, I'll send you a plan for the whole, uh, for the classes as well. It's going to be a four month plan. So I'll share that with you as well. Did he get okay, everyone? Okay, sir. Take care, love is. Love is, sir.